the role of the US dollar as the global reserve currency has been a topic of debate for many years. Some argue that the US dollar's dominance is supported by the US military, while others claim it is due to the credibility of the US Federal Reserve. However, when asked why they prefer the US dollar, the average person would likely answer that it holds its value and can be spent anywhere. These two reasons highlight the impossible trinity that central banks face and the critical decisions made by the US concerning their currency. The impossible trinity, also known as the impossible trilemma or the unholy trinity, is a concept in international economics that states having all three of the following simultaneously is impossible. A fixed or stable foreign exchange rate, free capital movement, absence of capital controls, and an independent monetary policy, setting an interest rate different from your peers. The US has managed to maintain a stable currency and allow free capital movement without capital controls. But their ability to keep an interest rate that is different from their peers directly affects their ability to maintain the US dollar exchange rate stable. Therefore, they cannot have option 3. China, on the other hand, has been able to maintain a stable currency but maintain strict capital controls on all flows throughout China. There are strict limits to the number of US dollars a Chinese citizen can purchase with their hard-earned yuan. In other words, it's not that difficult to put dollars into China, but it is very challenging to get them out. These restrictions allow them to set monetary policy more independently without affecting their exchange rate. Thus, China chooses to have options 1 and 3, but they cannot have option 2. Countries that are net producers have chosen to be paid in US dollars. As they can invest those US dollars into US assets like treasury bills, US government bonds, US real estate, or US equities. Moreover, these can be sold and converted back fully into their local currency on demand. However, net producer countries realize the fragility of this model when Russia, a net producer country that had accumulated some savings in US dollar assets, had those assets blocked and access to the US dollar banking system removed. The US dollar was effectively weaponized against them. This recent development has prompted a series of net producer countries or exporting countries to reconsider their use of the US dollar for trade in their sovereign reserves. Some countries or groups of countries have been struggling to become the next global currency, namely China and the BRIC countries. In an interview in Washington, the governor of People's Bank of China stated that China has largely completed normal foreign exchange intervention. While he mentioned that the bank still reserves the right to intervene, they are letting the market determine the exchange rate. This is a clear attempt to demonstrate that the yuan is a stable currency and that it does not need the intervention from the central bank to remain stable. What this does not do is eliminate China's strict capital controls and overall restrictions to move capital throughout China. For any currency to challenge the US dollar, it must be equally convertible without any restrictions. Under this scenario, you could see why a Chinese trader would prefer to be paid in US dollars and not convert them. If they do convert them fully to yuan, they may very well not be able to return to USD or not do so at the right rate. Moreover, exporting countries prefer the US dollar because the US based assets that can be purchased with those dollars are equally attractive and high quality. They can also be exchanged with very little friction. Capital can flow throughout the US freely. China not only has to address its capital control issues to challenge the dollar. It also needs to ensure that capital can move throughout China as easily as it does in the USA. As much as capital controls exist in China and capital flows are limited, the yuan cannot challenge the US dollar. The restrictions on capital flows in China are a major obstacle to the yuan becoming a global reserve currency. Capital controls limit the amount of money that can be taken out of China and the ability of foreigners to invest in the country. The Chinese government has implemented these measures to maintain control over the country's financial system and limit the impact of global economic shocks on its economy. However, these measures also limit the ability of the yuan to be used as a currency for international trade and investment. In order to become a global reserve currency, the yuan needs to be freely convertible with no restrictions on the movement of capital in and out of China. This would require significant changes to China's financial system, including reforms to its banking system, currency regime, and capital controls. China has made some progress in this area, but there is still a long way to go. In recent years, the government has relaxed some of its capital controls, such as allowing foreigners to invest in its domestic bond market and expanding the channels for Chinese citizens to invest overseas. The People's Bank of China has also taken steps to make the yuan more widely available. such as signing currency swap agreements with other countries to facilitate trade in their local currencies. However, there are still significant barriers to the yuan's internationalization. For example, 
China's capital account is not fully liberalized, and there are still limits on the amount of money that can be taken out of the country. In addition, the yuan is not yet fully convertible, as it is still subject to certain restrictions and limitations. Another challenge for the yuan is its lack of liquidity in global markets. The majority of international trade and investment is still conducted in US dollars, which makes it difficult for the yuan to compete as a global currency. In order to increase its liquidity, the yuan needs to be widely accepted and used in global markets, which requires a critical mass of users and market infrastructure. Despite these challenges, China is committed to making the yuan a global reserve currency. China has been promoting the use of the yuan in international financial institutions, such as the International Monetary Fund (IMF) and the World Bank. In 2016, the IMF added the yuan to its basket of reserve currencies, alongside the US dollar, the euro, the Japanese yen, and the British pound. This was a significant milestone for the yuan's internationalization, as it recognized the currency's growing importance in global trade and investment. In conclusion, while the US dollar remains the dominant global reserve currency, there are efforts underway to challenge its supremacy. China's yuan is one of the most promising contenders, but it still has a long way to go to become a fully-fledged global currency. The Chinese government needs to continue to reform its financial system, liberalize its capital account, and promote the use of the yuan in global trade and investment. But for now, the winner is always the American U.S. dollar. Thanks for watching.